G'day, I'm Gary from ECI Imports and you're watching ECI TV. Enjoy. G'day everyone, uh, we're here at ECI TV for episode nine. G'day Gary. Yeah, how are you mate? In this chilly Victorian morning? Good, good. Sun's out, so hopefully it'll warm up. Sun's out, gun's out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, talk Very about... balmy 18 degrees today. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Talk about getting out, looks like uh, COVID-19 restrictions are lifting, um, not just here uh, in Victoria, but across the nation and uh, across the world. That's great. So uh, it might take a while for things to get back to normality, but uh, it's nice to be able to catch up with some friends. So I'm looking forward to having a ride this afternoon with some mates. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, we're a lot more restricted here in Victoria than anywhere else in Australia. I was talking with Bruce Morris from Lux BMX uh, a couple of days ago and they look like they're starting up their training or coaching again because their restrictions have lifted to the point where they can have 100 people at, a, at an event. So it's still not enough to run a clubby or anything, but uh, at least they can run coaching camps and things like that. So it looks like they're getting their first step back to normality. Those Queenslanders put a lot of emphasis into their coaching, don't they? Very much so, but they do they do perform well. That's true. Um, and we're going to change things up here at ECI TV. We're going to uh, change the format a little bit. So over the next few weeks, you might notice that, fingers crossed, the shows will get shorter, um, and we'll have a little bit more focus alternating between shows from week to week. So um, just watch watch this space. There's some massive changes coming actually. Even Shane's got a hat on instead of a beanie. So there's a change to start with. <laughs> As Gary said, the restrictions are different depending on where you're from. Um, so the USA BMX announced their first national, which is in three weeks' time. I'm really not sure how they're going to do that, but uh, it's the Bounce Back Nationals June 5th to 7th at Mays County BMX, which is just outside of Tulsa. Um, and it looks like it'll be a while before we get to race in Australia, but, uh, you know, good luck to USA BMX and the riders that get a chance to get stuck into it. Hard to imagine how they can plan that for like in three weeks' time, early June. It's just, it seems so premature, I suppose. Yeah. Last week we were talking to Bill Ryan from Supercross about um, cranks, but it, uh, the conversation blew out into all sorts of things, including 3D printing. Uh, one of our viewers, Brenton from Adelaide, uh, sent in some photos of some designs he's been doing for his kid's bike uh, for 3D printing, and it replaces the. Um, Chain tensioner. So it's my turn to make myself look like an idiot and try to share stuff here. Uh, Guess I do it every other week. So <laughs> look like an idiot, I mean. <laughs> do you do it so naturally? It just it does come naturally. <laughs> oh, now what have we got? We've got share. everything on there. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. see the big screen, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, he's a CAD designer and he's designed this little widget here that you see. Um, so this slots into the dropout, um, axle bolt clearly goes through here. Uh, and let's have a look at the photos. So here he is uh, 3D printing it. More 3D printing. Okay, so it looks like he's pulled it off the build plate there. Uh, and let's see if we can find a photo. So. This is one of the frames he's built it for. Um, so it drops in to the dropout and obviously the bolt goes back in, in between the two. So you can see how it fits in there and how flush it is. So basically that replaces a chain tensioner. It just keeps um, the back wheel in the same position. So you'd have to make multiples of these um, to keep tension in the chain, um, but they're quite cheap once you've got your 3D printer all set up. So you'd have to make them in, in multiples of like one or two mil to be able to um, have it where it, it, it neatly uh, tightens up the chain to the point where you want it. Yeah, it would get fidgety um, and you'd need, you know, good CAD skills and um, a lot of patience, I'd imagine. Um, 3D printing isn't an instantaneous thing. It's not like printing a, um, a page off a document on your printer where it would come out in seconds. But um, it seems like you spent a lot of time trying to get this one right. And clearly they'd be quite uh, inexpensive once it's set up. Um, I suppose it does give you the opportunity to have it any colour and any de any design, like have your name in it or anything like yeah. that uh, moving forward if you want it custom made. 
colors can be a bit limiting with 3D printing, but um, okay. yeah, it's a nice little uh, widget that he's created. It looks like he's done a few other things here. Um, so okay. that looks like a bottom bracket spacer. Hmm. All right, so uh, there is some practical application for 3D printing. Uh, I don't, just don't know if there'll ever be a production thing where um, there'll be a big call out for customized um, spaces and things like that. Um, you were mentioning earlier on that there was a, um, a BMXer that actually built virtually a, a, a majority of his bike uh, with 3D printing, just a, a, as a bit of a, a test case type thing. Yeah, so uh, it's something that I'm interested in because it's the um, industry that I'm working in at the moment. Um, so there was a guy who is a freestyler, um, has a 3D printer and started making things like uh, stems, um, chain rings, uh, hub shells. And, and I think it's more or less just a fun thing for himself. Mm. He must be an engineering student or something and um, just a proof of concept more than anything. So he'll build them, go off and ride them and see if they'll hold up. And um, things like hub shells he had to refine because it shattered the first time around. Um, but stems and things held up. I don't know if I'd want to run them on today's uh, racetracks. They just seem to, especially if you're trying to jump things and come up a bit short, like uh, I have a tendency to do. Um, but it seemed to work for him for freestyle. I just don't know what the longevity or the lifespan of that product would be. Uh, well, things have to start somewhere. So I suppose if he's, if he's got that initial concept and messing around with it a bit, who knows where that might end up. And the, yeah. obviously the material that is used um, has to be developed to be able to sustain, you know, sort of uh, stronger impacts and everything, but oh, watch this space. Yeah, it'd be good for prototyping. And then I guess yeah. once, you've, once you've got it refined, you'd make it out of aluminium or something else. And speaking about prototyping and, and unusual things, you've got some news from um, Bill Ryan from Supercross in regards to some new bars. Yeah, so I think it was episode three we interviewed Bill Ryan and asked him about some new products coming out, and he touched on these carbon bars back then. Um, so this week they've released photos, and the bars should be available in about a month's time. Um, super lightweight. I can't remember the weights off the top of my head, but um, half the weight of a chrome molly handlebar, at least. <clears throat> they come in three pro sizes, so 7.5, 8, and 8.5 inch rise. They're, as I said, lightweight. Um, there's no rider weight limitation, so these are going to be as good for me as they are for um, someone much skinnier. Um, 31.8 clamping? Yeah, 31.8 clamping area. So there's a number of stems out there already that they could use. The Profile Nova. Um, what is it? Pro Max and Box have stems that fit these. Yep. Uh, even Dane Designs, who we'll talk to later, I think he's done some 31.8 stems as well. So... Uh, yeah, they'll be pretty exciting. Um, some of the team riders already have them on their bikes, and um, I'm sure we'll see quite a few weight weenies chasing these up over the next few months. Sadly, for the first time ever, we don't have a show us your bike segment. No, we, we, um, we didn't get many entries this week, but fortunately we did get one entry, which was quite strong and led to a few other things. So... There was one very proud guy that um, sent us some pictures of his bike, as well as some little video clips of a couple of other things he's doing. So this is Aaron Wheatland, uh, also known as Wheaty. Um, I think he's from Mildura. So he sent us uh, lots of uh, photos of his bike. He's so bike proud. And along with that, he sent us two links, one for a pump track build, because he's a tattooist. He hasn't been able to um, do any work. so. He's been putting all his time into building this nice little pump track in his backyard. Um, so we'll show you a short clip of that, and then later on you can uh, go and have a look at the full um, build. I think it's a, a series of videos that he put out. Yeah, it only go, it only, the whole build only goes for like five minutes or something, the video. So it's definitely worth having a look at because he's he does a great job, great job at it. Um, and he's also built himself up a new bike, probably in ideal time while there's a COVID lockdown. Um, so we'll show you some of his bike build video as well, and you, you can go check out the whole lot. It's pretty pretty well put together, isn't it? Certainly is. It's, look, he's done a great job. He obviously knows a fair bit about editing um, because, yeah, that was um, quite well put together. The 
a pump track that he's built in his backyard up there in Mildura would be the envy of so many people because it is just an awesome little setup, fantastic little pump track, and he's done a great job doing it. I know how much hard work it takes to get some of those yeah. jumps and corners right. Um, so to think that he might have done it on his own or with very little help, um, he's done a good job. Mm, definitely. All right, so we've got an interview for today. Um, we spoke. I sat down and spoke to Dane Anderson from Dane Designs, who are a local manufacturer here in um, Victoria, uh, initially based in Geelong, but they've recently moved to Sunbury. Um, hit the play button. Beep. Thanks for joining us on ECI TV, Dane. Uh, it's been a long time coming, been wanting to talk to you for quite a while, being a, um, a local manufacturer. Um, tell us uh, a little bit about how Dane Designs came about. Um, so in January 2018, um, I was injured. Uh, I can't remember what I'd done to myself because I've obviously injured myself a fair bit riding BMX. But um, in the background leading up to January, I was designing head stems and mm. had some ideas floating around. And just as I'd gotten back onto a bike, um, I popped my front load on and you know, gave it a bit of a test, put it out uh, into the social media world and saw what it did and yeah, it got a fair bit of uh, interest. And yeah, that's where we started. We started off with head stems, which kind of kicked off the brand pretty well and then started to spread out into you know, some other parts. Um, so it's two years now since we've been up and running. So it was a, a lot longer than that that you um, came up with the idea. I remember you'd been talking about it for at least a couple of years before that started. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest motivators for me was being six foot four, trying to find something that I wanted and that I could ride with. Um, obviously, stem length was a bit of an issue. To try and find anything that was about you know, 65 mil in length was quite challenging. Um, so to find something um, was next near impossible. I remember um, back in the day, we used to run Supercross ones. I think it was a race ahead. Um, great stems, um, but to find them it was really, really hard. I'm pretty sure Bill only did a very short run of them. So, yeah. um, you know, each time we grabbed them, we had to grab a couple of them um, to keep me going. But uh, moving on from there, once I sort of found what formula worked for me on the bike, which was a 61, which is quite an obscure size, uh, that's what it sort of ran with. So um, it was all top load stems that you were making? So we've done um, front and top load. Uh, on my bike at the moment is a, a front load, and that's what I've been running for you know, the last couple of years. Uh, and then we introduced the top load uh, to appeal to a more broader market. How much of an appeal do you think the local manufactured um, concept has here in Australia? Do people just want a stem or do they want something different? I think there's a few diehard fans that really want um, some of the cool boutique stuff that is made in Australia. Um, unfortunately for the rest of uh, the industry, it's more about um, the brand name and how the brand name is marketed and what is what is cool, so to speak. Um, a lot of the guys who have bought Dane stems uh, obviously haven't come back with any issues and they love them and uh, most of them actually bought multiple items, which is really cool. Um, and they're sort of like a cult little following. Um, but it's hard to sort of break into the market when you've got the likes of Box and Promax, um, you know, Tangent and all the other companies out there um, that can offer a price um, point that is a lot cheaper than what uh, my product is. But uh, sometimes the, the quality is a little bit questionable. You get what you pay for, don't you, really? You really do, yeah. Um, have you ever considered having any of your products manufactured overseas? I have considered it. However, I'm a little bit cautious. Um, cautious more to the point of when you send a design overseas, you're not entirely sure what's going to come back to you. Um, what might look like your product um, might actually, in fact, not be your product. Uh, they might use a slightly different material. Um, the tolerances could be a little bit different. And obviously, the quality control is a whole lot different. Me being as fast as I am, I'm uh, really, really really conscious of quality control um, needs to make sure everything is exactly how I'd want it if I was putting it on my bike uh, and that way that really really reduces the risk of any failures or you know customer dissatisfaction. Um, so you've made stems what other products are in the um, product line? 
So we've currently got chain tensioners, uh, 20 mil to 10 mil reducer blocks for speed, decay, intense frames. Not that intense are around anymore, but we use them as a, you know, as a bit of a platform. Um, bar ends. We were doing disc brake mounts. Um, we've done a couple of custom jobs as well, um, but then we've sort of stepped into another area, which is our titanium line. So uh, what titanium gear can people get from Dane Designs? So far, we have introduced uh, headset spaces. Uh, we've got titanium brake post mounts for your V-brakes, and then we've got accompanying bolts to go in those posts as well. Uh, so <clears throat> um, most of the gear is for pro-size stuff, like handlebars. Uh, so your bar plugs are for pro-size handlebars. Um, headset spaces are for one and one eighth. Is that right? Yeah. So um, the brake post mounts will go into pretty much any aluminium bike uh, with V brakes. So uh, quite a few of our, uh, you know, our loyal customers uh, running smaller bikes have actually got the V brake posts in there. Um, in their little bikes, which is pretty cool. Uh, the bar ends will fit into most chrome ollie bars, um, and we can go into that a little bit later on how how it's machined and things like that. But most of the stuff is for, for the bigger guys. Um, we haven't quite gotten into the, the smaller market as of yet, just due to not quite um, understanding the weights that people are wanting the parts to be. Um, it's a pretty common thing with the Dane brand that uh, our parts are a little bit heavier than most. And that is because we prefer to sacrifice a bit of weight uh, to make the parts incredibly strong. I personally like to have a, a stem underneath me that is not going to break and that I can trust is going to hold on um, through my type of riding um, in comparison to some of the other brands that will just give out um, or crack a, a top cap or whatever. So that I'm quite happy to stand by. And ultimately, if that loses some customers, then that's okay because realistically, when it comes to failure, I don't like any of my parts to fail. It's uh, I'd much prefer to have something that's rock solid um, on my bike. It's a very '90s ethos, isn't it? Um, built, make stuff that's built to last. <clears throat> it is to a degree. Like obviously, we've taken weight into consideration, but um, it really is one of those things that I want these parts to be able to last a customer. You know, you know, two to three years. Um, the stem that I'm running, I've been running for two years. Um, and that's been on and off more times than I can count going into bike bags for overseas travel. Um, you know, it's been crashed on, hard, crashed on, um, you know, and it still holds up really, really well. And I'm not looking to replace it in any time soon. Um, you know, it's still the same, same, same. So. Um, so what lengths can people get your stems in? The stems come in uh, 53, uh, 57, in a top load, um, 53 and 61 in the front load. So there's no smaller, um, anything smaller than that at all, no 48 mils or anything like that? We've done a couple of custom jobs in the past where we've, I think they were 49 mil. Um, so the, uh, the designs are there, um, but when it comes to making anything small or any type of stem, we kind of need to run a, a decent batch uh, to make it worthwhile. Um, there's a fair bit of messing around going into programming machines and things like that. Um, so realistically, if we were just going to do one, then it's going to cost a, a lot of money to do. And ultimately, when it comes to anything custom, um, as cool as it is, it is going to come with a price tag and not a lot of people are going to want to pay that type of money. Have you got one of your stems there that you can show us or should we just pop up a uh, photo on the screen? No, I've got one on the bike. Okay. Um, so that's a, a 61 mil front load. Obviously, it's hidden behind a, a number plate. Is that just a standard polish? That is just my standard polish, yeah. Oh, it's quite shiny, isn't it? It's a little bit dirty. Um, I haven't had a chance to really bling it up, but... It's still got a nice shine to it, though. It's not too bad. Not too bad. And, and that uh, has the ability to run both um, the traditional way like that, or you can flip it to get a bit of extra height? Yeah, absolutely. And does that, it looks like you've got stainless steel bolts on there? They are um, zinc coated steel bolts. Okay. Yeah. So we used to use black, um, black steel bolts, um, but 
with the, the black steel bolts, after a little bit of time in the weather, um, or if you're carrying your bike on a bike rack or something like that, they started to rust up and it made the stem look pretty shoddy. So um, we decided to invest a little bit more money into getting the, the zinc coated ones. Uh, same tensile strength, uh, I think they're a 12.8. Um, so they're super strong bolts. Um, now they've just got a, a nicer coating, which makes them look better um, and obviously resistant to the elements. Um, and you've got some other bits and pieces there to show us. Do you want to show us the Ooh. bar ends? The what, sorry? The bar ends. Yeah. So this is our new product, um, our new bar ends. This is um, hot off the press. They've only been made or been out now for a couple of days. Um, the way we've designed them is we've got a couple of different size grooves down here. So the kit comes with um, three sets of O-rings, and the O-rings are to take up the diameter of the handlebar. Not all chromoly handlebars uh, run the same gauge of tubing, so we run different O-rings in there to accommodate that space. Um, and then we've milled out the very center to make them quite light. And obviously the design, um, sort of the, the classic Dane D&D, &D, but also took a little bit of inspiration from the old profile bar ends from back in the day to give it like a nice little curve. Um, so they are also in my race bike. And again, I'll quickly show you those. So, so once they're, they're um, in position, they're not going to move. They definitely aren't moving. Okay. They're nice and firm to push in. Um, and they certainly aren't coming out. So uh, the other thing that we did was we made sure that the diameter of the bar end was to suit most lock-on grips. Um, so the clamp there, so it's actually a nice and flush. Not overly flush there, I guess. But So it's fairly flush there with the Mac grip. You wouldn't feel uh, that little tiny step. But um, is it the same with the ODI? Yeah. So I run um, ODIs on a couple of other bikes like my mountain bikes and exactly the same there's just a nice flush fit which is uh kind of i like running my hands wide on handlebars you know i don't like having that you know having a notch or something there um yeah so they're just a, a nice way to finish off the end of your handlebar um and you got some chain tensioners as well yeah our v2 aluminium 10 mil chain tensioners uh, so a little bit different than our first generation ones. Obviously, the design at the front's a little bit different. Um, we put a, a couple more detail lines in, but also we've scalloped the end to give it a nicer, a nicer finish there. Obviously, taking a bit more material off to lighten them up as well. But essentially, it's the same chain tensioner. They're quite strong. Made a 6061 T6, uh, so the tensile strength is quite high but also uh, yeah, nice and light. So what colours can you get your products in? We utilise Cerakote ceramic coating. The only reason why we go down that path is because to try and find an anodizer in Victoria or you know, come to think of it in Australia is actually quite a challenging feat. Uh, when we first kicked off the brand, we found uh, an anodizer that was in Melbourne and I wasn't at all happy with the quality that they uh, provided me with. And to be honest, I was a little bit um, disappointed because I couldn't quite sell the product. Um, so I decided to look for another avenue. And the ceramic coating is utilised on guns in the US. Uh, it's something that is uh, very resistant to um, yeah, chemicals and oils, but also really, really hard wearing. And it's basically a spray on application. Uh, super, super thin. They are the world leaders in um, you know, nano coating technology. And it really is just a really great product. Um, the color wise, we've got uh, lots of different colors. Um, there's a catalog if uh, anyone wants to jump onto the Cerakote website and have a look at that. Um, but like we've got some pretty out there colors. I've done a green, like a zombie green stem, um, the KTM orange, and then you've got multiple different blues and purples. Um, the reds, the, actually the fire engine red is pretty cool. That's uh, really nice and vibrant. And a majority of them are, are that nice flat colour. So it actually really makes the colour pop. Um, yeah. I do really, they, really like it. Do they do neons? Uh, uh, not really. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think uh, you can camouflage a gun in neon. 
somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, you know, someone might want a neon. It's still quite common in BMX. Um, uh, you've done some titanium products too. Do you want to show us those? Yeah, yeah. Um, so might not focus too well, but we've got our, um, our V-brake posts. Uh, they're to replace the standard steel ones that come into frame. So they're actually about, I think they're eight grams lighter than the steel ones. Um, they're, it's one of those things where it's a it's an unseen product, but if your factory dad, you know, weight weenie, it's going to shave a whole bunch of weight off, you know, the kid's bike for a, a small amount of money. I think they retail for, I think it's $36. So uh, $36 for, you know, nine grams off a, um, off a mini bike. Yeah, I think that's pretty well money spent. Well, yeah. Um, what else have you got there? So we got bolt. I don't have any of the bolts with me right now, but uh, we got the tie bolts to accompany those brake posts, which are an extra. I think they're an extra twelve dollars or something like that. Um, and one of the cool things that's on my bike at the moment are the tie headset spaces. Uh, once again, I don't know if the camera is going to really focus in on that. Oh, yeah. Sorta. Of. Okay. Um, just about make out your um, logo there. It's a shame we can't get it a bit crisper. Mm, too close. Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> I don't think it wants to focus. It's a bit like me this time. Oh, oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah, they're, they're quite thin. They're very light. Um, they're just a nice addition to, um, you know, to the setup of a bike. Not like carbon, which has a, um, you know, which could crack. A lot of the plastic um, spaces also crack under load. So when you get tired, you're obviously getting the durability and the lightweight all um, put into one, and they look pretty awesome too. And you said they come as a pack? They do. They come uh, in a four pack. So you get um, three five mil and one 2.5 mil, and uh, they are $35. Oh, nice. Um, so if people want to find out more about Dane Designs, where would they go? Uh, if you go to the Dane Design Facebook page, the Instagram page, um, you'll be able to find our products and details there. We also have um, our retailer in Geelong, which is Geelong Bicycles. Uh, they have our full product line and are able to get them uh, very quickly. Um, I think that's about all we got time for tonight. Thanks, Dane, for joining us. And it was um, great. Uh, thanks very much for showing us through all your product range. I didn't realize it was so big. It's growing. Um, we're trying to sort of um, expand it a little bit without going too crazy. Um, but we're slowly getting there, you know. Hope to be in the, um, uh, in the BMX world for a long time um, and hope to be one of those brands that, uh, you know, in years to come, people will be like, uh, yeah, let's get Dane parts for our old school builds, you know, because they were a, a really cool boutique part back in the day. So that's kind of where we're heading and fingers crossed we can get there. Uh, well, good luck with everything. Um, great job so far and look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Great. Thanks for having me on. No worries. See you, mate. See ya. Well, that, that was very informative. That was great from Dane. It's um, good to see that local manufacturers and someone with a passion like that can actually turn around and just from almost a hobby, turn around and actually start to manufacture some quality products. And um, and I think it's a case of watch your space because I think he'll go a fair way with his his product range. It, it looks pretty impressive and a good interview too, Shane. Oh, thank you. I, I like the way that um, all the products seem to have a theme running through them. So we've got nice little almost pinstriping. Um, they're all very matchy-matchy. Um, yep. And some of the colours he was talking about um, and the ceramic paint jobs and stuff, um, sounds like he's got some pretty cool stuff coming out of there. That was interesting, the ceramic paint. I'd like to look into that a little bit more because um, obviously with anodising, colour matching and everything like that is always an issue. And um, with with that style of thing that he's talking about, it um, yeah, definitely worth having a, a bit of research on that. The, um, the products are also, um, apart from being through Dane, I think he, he mentioned, or through Dane Designs, he mentioned that um, Geelong Bicycle, Simon Anderson, is, is carrying his full range. And with that in mind, we might even look at seeing if we can have a bit of a chat with Simon Anderson in the, in the coming weeks. Simon loves a chat, and uh, we've all known each other for quite a while, so hopefully yeah. he won't run away from us. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I suppose we could probably almost wrap it up. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> this new format works out all right, doesn't it? I'm sure it does. It's it scary. <laughs> Was it really worth getting up this time in the morning for that? No, I'm only joking. <laughs> At least we finished on time. That's it. That's it. So uh, hopefully you all enjoy this shorter f format and uh, a little bit quicker sort of setup. It does make it easier that we didn't have a great deal of interviews and we didn't have show us your bike this, um, this episode. But please, with that in mind, let us know if there is someone you'd like us to have a chat to, uh, have an interview with, whether it's in industry or rider or anything like that. And we're more than happy to hit them up. Um, we also announced last week that we were going to have some dad jokes midweek. We had a few editing problems with that. So what we'll do is we'll um, reshoot that and have that coming to you shortly with Tom Simmar and Tony Harvey. Uh, Dozer actually told me he's getting in touch with um, Michael Bias and they'll be doing a dad joke battle together sometime soon as well. Um, so we don't miss out on show us your bike again next week. Uh, shoot us your photos. Don't be scared. All the photos are accepted and loved and uh, cherished. So um, make sure you shoot those photos through either to ECI TV at bmxultra.com or go to our website at ecitv.com.au or Gary will tell you what the socials are. Uh, social, um, yeah, yeah. You'll see it all written at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> 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 Well, that's probably about it for us. Now, just make sure you do um, have a look at the links at the end of the show to jump on and have a look at the videos from Aaron in regards to his pump track and his bike build because, yeah, they were quite exceptional. So it's definitely worth having a bit of a browse at that. All right, Gaz. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Hopefully you get out to have another fish this weekend. Yeah, I had a great one last night. So it was beautiful. So. Anyway, uh, enjoy your ride this afternoon, and Thanks, we'll see mate. everyone out in video land next week. See ya. Okay. We forgot to say to subscribe, or did you? Uh, maybe. Maybe we'll do it now. Yeah. All right. Don't forget to subscribe to ECI. To ECI BMX TV thing, whatever. <laughs> the ECI imports on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you might have noticed we're also uh, uploading our videos to Facebook. <laughs> Hello. You, you pussy. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, now we'll be famous. Isn't it cats are always famous on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth a try. Anyway, Next don't thing. forget to subscribe. It's very important. I don't know where to, but just Google it. <laughs> Hard to imagine how they can plan that for like in three weeks' time, early June. It's just, it seems so premature, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a problem, isn't it? It is. <laughs> um, and cut, last. Cut, 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 cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is Aaron Wheatley. Wheat. So I've got to start again. It's Dougie when it says Shane is recording the call. If I had my tinfoil hat on, I'd be concerned at what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky it's not. Uh... What is it, G5, 5G? <laughs> the ductor heating's under the floor, and because it's right under the desk, it kind of circulates under there. It's perfect. Uh, blowing up your shorts. <laughs> what shorts? Hmm. Oh, you haven't got anything on. <laughs> <laughs>